So I'm um, Wendy and I are going to get started. For those of you who don't know, Wendy and I were the massage therapists here at Santa Monica Google office. Some of you out there we know. Thanks for coming and utilizing the program. And we are very honored and privileged today um, as part of our Tech Talks, which we're going to start trying to do about every quarter for you guys in terms of things about like body work that you're interested in. So anyone here, and also spread the word to other Googlers, if there's any topics that you'd like us to present in a Tech Talk, please let us know. And you can either email Wendy or I. Um, and so now to get on with today's Tech Talk, Again, we're privileged and honored today to um, welcome the um, Emperor's College of Oriental Medicine, traditional oriental medicine. Um, I'm in acupuncture school right now there at, the, at that school, and they wanted to come and, you know, give you guys an idea of the things that I'm studying and that you may hear about when I work on some of you. Um, it's incredible. Um, field of science with Eastern medicine. Um, as you all know, it's making its way into our Western world here with integrative medicine. So um, I guess then I'll just introduce who's going to be speaking today. So we'll start with um, um, Jacques is our dean at the school. And Dr. Kim over here, you can wave to everybody. Um, is also going to be speaking, and then we've also have our um, our admissions and outreach is Mary Good, and the CEO of the school um, Yun, and um, one of our board members from the school as well. And did you want to say anything? I think Heather's covered all the bases. I I too am honored to have these people here and to hear this talk today about traditional. Oriental medicine. Um, I know it's benefited me in in my life, and so we're just really happy that we can bring this to you. And it's right here in our community in Santa Monica. Um, I'm going to pass around a sign-in sheet. We'd love to have you guys sign in so that we know who attended, and um, so that we can follow up with you. This is also going to be videotaped for anybody who might want to see it later, or for anyone who didn't make it today. Um, you can let them know that. So that's it. Oh, and, I, and Wendy just reminded me, yes, the school is here in Santa Monica. It's over on 18th and Wilshire. And they have a clinic, and they'll talk about that more um, when they do the presentation. So if you have questions about that, but you're all welcome to go to their clinic, and they'll have coupons for you as well for a discount. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for such an eloquent presentation. All right, today we're going to start. This is Dr. Kim, and he will be doing the meditation and actually the acupuncture demonstration. So we'll talk about certain concepts of oriental medicine prior to that, and also I will be doing a demonstration of Tai Chi, which is a Chinese therapeutic movement exercise. So today we're going to cover an area which is Stress. Now, we all are familiar with this word. This word was coined by the English language as the English term of death stress is a French word. So stress came from the word death stress, and it became stress. So anything that causes the body to react in a manner other than the normal state of balance, which homeostasis. And some of the treatments that we are going to look at in terms of the Chinese herbal medicine, the acupuncture, the meditation, the therapeutic movements exercise are really trying to reestablish the homeostasis or the body's own natural balance order. So homeostasis is a very important word that is commonly used in natural therapeutics jargon. So homeos, as you all know, is similar stasis. Balance, homeostasis. How to achieve this homeostasis? Now, Oriental medicine has been around for 5,000 years, and during that time, they have had experience to research and test empirically by using this medicine over thousands of years, certain specific botanical plants, treatments, points, and movement that can help relax the body. So we will look at how the stress affects our body. The effects of stress on the body, there's 
we all are familiar with psychological stress, but besides the psychological stress, there's environmental stress factors. Environmental stress factors can be specific agents such as you know, chemicals out there in, in the atmosphere, can be chemicals in a building, it can also be the light, UV light, temperature changes, so on and so forth. So we have a lot of effects of our body within the environment that causes stress. But also, you might be aware that everybody that is driving to work is under a state of stress. So some of you say, how could be driving could affect me? Well, anybody that drives over 40 miles an hour actually is creating a stress response in the body. And we look at that. Now, the mechanism of stress are quite complex. However, just be aware that stress will work on a specific axis of the pituitary and hypothalamus to the adrenal. So the, the originator of this whole stress theory was Dr. Hans Selye. He was a Canadian physician that actually moved from Canada and did some research here at UCLA in the 1950s. And this gentleman really pioneered all what we know about stress today. So he conducted this research over 40 years of research and he, he said that stress, in a nutshell, is the non-specific re response of the body to any demand put upon it. So even though you might think of stress as being a negative effect, you can have stress even from a positive effect. If you win a lottery ticket, which is a wonderful thing to do, that can stress your body and your mind. The same thing as if a lady that has lost her son in the war has the stress of losing the son, a stress of the death, if this son somehow reappears, and there have been many cases like around World War II where people were lost in the jungles and then they reappeared, well, just the stress of re-seeing him after so many years will also create this havoc in the body. So when you talk about stress, uh, the body goes through different phases. So it is broken down, according to the work of Dr. Selye, into three different stages. One is the alarm phase. The alarm phase defines the initial reaction to the stressor. In other words, if you're under a situation from our old ancestry where we might have been confronting different wild animals or different tribes that would come and raid the village or, or the, the enclave, you would have this fight or flight mechanism. And this is really what gets set up in our system. This is the damaging part that occurs within our body. So when we are in this constant state of stress, even though when we go out, you know, we're not very likely going to encounter any tigers or wild bears outside here in Santa Monica. But if you drive out of this parking lot and you're not careful, what happens? Some car is coming down at 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, 20, 30 miles an hour over the speed limit. That creates the same effect within our body as in ancient time where we might have gone out into the jungle and encountered all these different elements. So this is a very important idea to see that we are under the stress. So the body has to cope with this stress and it goes through different phases. If you're un under constant stress, it becomes a resistance phase. So this taxes the body, both mentally and physically, and if it's prolonged, prolonged over a long term of time, it becomes the exhausted phase. So at this point, the system gets run down, okay? And people have different abilities of holding a pattern, holding a strong response to a stress, but over time, they will get run down. If people are constantly under stress, time will take its toll. So how to deal with that and how to improve the body's ability to cope with that is where oriental medicines come in. Why does it come in? Because they recognized thousands of years ago that the body has this innate ability to be strong enough to deal with different situations. So you don't look at the disease process, but you actually look at the terrain. You look at how is the organism doing? Why are there some people that can get flus and colds every time there's a flu and cold that comes around and other individuals that don't? It's not the flus and cold, it's the same virus. It's your body's ability and your body's own resistance. So if your body is strong, if you have that immune response that is very, very appropriate to the different circumstances, you can withstand a lot of these uh, external influences, 
In ancient time, they called them external influences. Nowadays, we recognize them as viruses and bugs and flus. So, stress is unavoidable. It can be a positive negative. The body constantly adapts and adjusts to stress. It's very interesting. Uh, over my 35 years of practice, I've very often encountered patients that were in concentration camps in Germany during the Holocaust, and yet the body was able to adapt. And as far as I'm concerned, that's just about the most extreme stress that you can suffer. Some of these uh, individuals had been there for three, four years, even as youngsters, teenagers. And nowadays, they're in their 80s. How did they cope all these years? Is that their body had the ability to adapt as much as it was suffering, as much as it was sad and a difficult time. Some of people lost most of their relatives. They were able to adapt. And that's the one thing about the nervous system. It has this innate ability to adapt to stress. Some individuals can adapt more than others. So that's a key thing. Now, besides the actual, so individuals are unique to their response to stressor. Besides the ability to adapt, there are certain things that come into place is these mechanisms of stress. So within the stress, once you have this stress factor that comes into place, there's a specific mechanism that is triggered within the body. So I want you all look at this chart and see that you have these basic centers within the brain that correlate with the hormonal system. So this little graph is very simple. will show you how the pattern goes. You have the stimuli or you have the stressor. It affects the hypothalamus, this major, like a major switchboard in the brain. That sends a message to the pituitary gland, which in turn release this ACTH, which is cortisol. So when you're under the stress and constant stress, this mechanism keeps on going on and on and on. So it's a, like a, a, a feedback mechanism. And it goes back, and then it releases more. The idea being you need to try and buffer this mechanism, and how you do it is by incorporating into your daily lifestyle things such as meditation, acupuncture, herbal medicine, and the Tai Chi exercise. So the stress can affect the body in many different ways. Some people get panic disorders. This is more of a drastic effect of the stress within the body. You can get the phobias, general anxiety disorder, or the so-called post-traumatic stress. Post-traumatic stress is very much into the news nowadays, especially since what? Since uh, the Iraq conflict, we get a lot of veterans coming back since the Afghan war. However, this post-traumatic stress had existed way back in Vietnam and even in World War II, except it was not well recognized, documented. Now, more and more veterans are coming back. There's more ailments that are showing up and it affects a multitude of systems especially the immune system. The immune system gets this depressed when you're in this most dramatic stress condition. Though that is the, the one side of the spectrum where all are experiencing some of these stresses at one point or another. So in a graphic way, you can see the hypothalamus up in the brain. It releases this stress factor through the pituitary, the master gland, and that's ACTH, the adrenal corticoid stimulating hormone, it releases cortisol. So cortisol is what really damages the body over long term. We all have it when we need the extra strength or the extra boost if, you're, if any of you have been in, in the ocean and there's a riptide or a current or a big wave and you really need that extra boost of adrenaline power, you will get it, that is good. However, if you have it sustained over long periods of time, that will damage and that will do a deep depression of your immune system. So how does traditional oriental medicine treat stress? On the left, you see the picture. That's the herbal medicine. You have the acupuncture. And you have the different tools, such as the cupping and massage. And the right side is the diagram of the acupuncture uh, system. Acupuncture or the acupuncture original theory is based on the idea of qi. Qi is the Chinese word for translation for energy. In uh, ancient uh, Greek, they call it pneuma. In um, Indian medicine or yoga. How many of you have studied yoga? A few people have studied uh, That would be prana or the 
breath energy that is done through yogic exercises. And many different cultures have this idea of energy and energy balancing. So if you have this circulation of chi that is obstructed, the acupuncture can actually help the circulation. It ha actually opens up these blockages within the body. So according to the National S Survey of Health, Institute of Health, over two million adults receive acupuncture treatment within the past two years. Acupuncture has become a very common practice. When I started here, when Dr. Kim started 30, 40 years ago, very few people would have acupuncture outside the Oriental community. Either you had it in Chinatown, Koreatown, Japantown. But now it's become an established mode of therapy and it's well recognized of its therapeutic effect. And the National Institute of Health is conducting studies on that phase. So acupuncture and oriental medicine, it is a complete system in that they look at the mind and body, but they also will offer different types of therapies. One of them is herbal medicine. Asian body work, you all have experienced some of the twina, the massage, the ammo, that is the idea of the body work is one of the fields of practice of oriental medicine. The other one we call it qi exercise or energy exercise, anything like qigong, which is the Chinese version of yoga, tai chi, the slow, slow, moving, slow movement exercise that connects the mind, body, and breath. All those are integrated into the practice. And this has really developed here in the States in the last 30 years. So oriental medicine does look at the body as a total, not at each individual symptom. So when you have oriental medicine, and Dr. Kim will do a demonstration, he will show you how he makes this assessment and how he treats. You want to see the body as a whole, not just physical, not just mental, the integration of both. And some of the classics of oriental medicine, going back to the Yellow Emperor, who was traditionally the founder of oriental medicine, was 5,000 years ago. He discussed the relationship of motion, emotions and organ system. So we know that emotion and organ system are interrelated. Today, we have a new field called psychoneuroimmunology. It's a very long, fancy word to meaning integration of mind, body, and immunity. This is nothing new. The oriental medical system had it within its resources, within its tradition, and within its uh, medical text. So the World Organization, the WHO, which is based out of Geneva, they recognize oriental medicine as a modality of treatment for over 40 type of diseases. And some of them, you might think, yeah, we all know that acupuncture has effect on joints and maybe on bones, but it does have effect on respiratory system. You know, a lot of patients have had acupuncture for allergies and asthma and had very good positive effects. So uh, certain uh, disease processes that we might not be so familiar with in terms of acupuncture are really very, very effective uh, and respond quite nicely with acupuncture. So post-traumatic stress is one of the areas that are actually being uh, treated and we have some of our alumni and practitioners that are doing some research with the VA right now. Uh, if you can treat and help in an individual with a post-traumatic stress disorder, it certainly is much easier to work with somebody that doesn't have this extreme case. So this is an extreme case where oriental medicine can come in handy. Um, another tool that we have at our disposal is so-called adaptogenic herbs. Uh, the word adaptogen is really a word that was coined by a couple of uh, former Soviet Union physicians. And they found out that there are certain herbs that help the, increase the body's resistance to disease they help to increase the body's resistance to extreme temperatures and extreme environmental factors. So these adaptogenic herbs help the body cope more effectively with stress. Okay. They have a general strengthening effect for the body and they especially work on the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands are a key mechanism that helps to respond our ability to cope with stress. Okay. So what are these adaptogenic herbs and what do they do? They have an antioxidant activity. That's one of the key things of damage within the body. So they help to buffer that. It improves blood and sugar metabolism. It normalizes sugar metabolism, improves resistance. 
increases energy and stamina, muscle tone strength, better focus, concentration, anxiety, sleep, and a general feeling of well-being. Now, in the former Soviet Union, they did some research on some of these herbs, and some of these herbs uh, were very effective for their space program, their athletic programs, and also their, um, their productivity. And they done some research in factories, research that lasted up to 10 years of research on tens of thousands of, of employees. And they found out that the individuals that were taking some of these herbs, they had less time off at work. They were much better in health-wise and productivity than the people that did not take these herbs. So, some of these herbs, you might have heard some of these herbs. Ginseng is the most, probably the most famous herb from the Orient. There's Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and even an American variety of ginseng that is grow in Wisconsin. And one of our forefathers here in America, his name was Daniel Boone. You all know Daniel Boone? He was a very big ginseng trader. So he actually went, cultivated the ginseng, and shipped it to Asia and had a whole business on that. The other herb is Elutro, Saber, also known as Siberian ginseng. This one was the main herb that they researched in the Soviet Union. And this herb had 1,200 scientists that worked on it for 40 years. In today's cost, it would have been $5 billion worth of research on this one herb that the former Soviet Union uh, did and found tremendous uh, properties in terms of helping the body cope with stress. And then another one is called astragalus. That's one of the most famous Chinese herb. And shisandra, shisandra also known as wu wei su or five flavor berry. These are tiny little berries that are used in Chinese pharmacopoeia. They are so valuable that in ancient time they were also used as a taxation system. So uh, you all know the term salary. Salary comes from the Latin word sale, which means salt. In ancient time, people in the Roman days used to be paid by uh, portions of salt. That was almost their salary, salario, is the, the, the Latin word. In terms of the shisandra, this five little berry pill, it has some very interesting properties because in Chinese medicine, we have five major organs, and these berries have these five different flavors. So according to oriental medicine, it strengthens up all the organs. However, all the modern research has found out that it has a lot of volatile oils and other components that are very beneficial for the immune system. So, ginseng, the most well-known, and if you can see it here, it has the shape of a man called ren shen in, in Chinese, which means man's root. And it is one of the most interesting herbs that he has this homeostatic ability. It has the ability to regularize the body. Very often somebody has low blood pressure, it will raise the blood pressure. If the blood pressure is low and needs to come up, it'll go up. But if it's high, it will bring it down. Also, it will help sugar metabolism. If the person is overtired, it will help to strengthen and stimulate the body, unlike caffeine. And if the person is too wrapped up, it will balance them out. So it has this normalizing function or homeostatic function. And of course it has this ability to endure and buffer the effects, the negative effects of stress on the body. Another point that I want to share with you, this is something you can have right here at the tip of your fingers and you can massage yourself. There are many different points on the body. One of the main points of the body that you might have had when you did acupressure treatments here with our fine therapist called Shen Men. Shen Men is on the other side of your of your wrist. So if everybody wants to locate this point, take your thumb, you see where your little finger goes? Right at the junction of that wrist. This is an, a point in Chinese, Shen means spirit, man is gate. But it has effects on calming the mind, tranquilizing the body, helps relax the nervous system, harmonizes mind and body. This is a very good point you can massage when you feel stressed and you just need a little time to relax. So it, it is an acupressure point also can be used with acupuncture, but you can massage it yourself. So when you feel stress, you can apply this point and it will help relax the body. It's a very basic acupressure point. So you can learn one item you can take home today is the acupressure point. And another thing that we want to touch upon is that there is things such as Tai Chi and Qigong, the moving meditation, 
which is a wonderful exercise. And we also have uh, outreach classes through our uh, acupuncture college, College of Oriental Medicine, which we offer to the public. And you might look into that too. And maybe there's some classes here at Google on Tai Chi and yoga. So um, I think without further delay, I'm going to uh, give the mic to Dr. Kim, and he will do a introduction on meditation, and then at the end, we can open for question and answer. So thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Anybody has pain? What kind of pain do you have? Huh? Hip joint. Okay. Anybody else has any pain? Low back pain. How long did you have that pain? Do you have a pain at this moment? Um, it's subtle right now, but it depends on how long I'm sitting for. Yeah. If you sit a long time, you have a headache? Yeah. I mean, low back pain? You said a hip joint, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have a pain at this moment? Mm -hmm. A little bit? Do anybody else have any pain? Okay. Would you like to volunteer, both of you? Okay. Can you come over here? <laughs> sit over here. Toward me, okay. Get another chair. By the way, he talked about ginseng. I brought some ginseng samples. This is American ginseng. This is a Korean ginseng, if you want to look around. Okay. Okay, so the, which hip joint do you have pain? Okay. How long you have that pain? About a year. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Did you have any accident? Uh, not recently, 20 years ago. Did you have an x-ray or MRI? Yes, x-ray. What does it show? There's some slight degradation of the, uh, of the, um, mm -hmm. the, um, the joint tissue. Like many of us mm -hmm. there, do you have a pain at this moment? Very little. Can, can you stand up? I can feel it now. Yeah. See, so you have a pain now. Do you have a pain on there? Yeah, it's, uh, I can feel that there is something there. It's not very strong. It's very, very weak okay. right now. Can you take off your shoes and socks? Hmm? Take off? Yeah, shoes and socks. You too. Shoes and socks. Actions speak louder than words. Uh, <laughs> Dr. King will yeah. show you. <laughs> yeah. If you stand up, you have a pain. If, when you sit, sit down and you stand up, you have a pain? Yeah, right now it's pretty weak. I mean, it comes and goes, you know. It's you, do, you don't have any pain, I mean. Not, not very strong, no. It's, it's, I, I feel there's it's pressure, though. I feel like a little bit of pressure. Yeah. OK. Sometimes it gets stronger. Sometimes, sometimes it gets stronger. Yeah. Do you know when it's stronger, when it's uh, softer? Thank you. So Dr. Kim right now is doing a, a diagnostic method where he's taking the pulse okay. and assessing the acupuncture meridian system. Mm -hmm. That's an ancient diagnostic Mr. technique, Tom. but it's very effective. Okay. And he's looking you, at the tongue yeah. to assess his Are you body. craving for sh uh, wheat flour product? Um, Bread or spaghetti, things like that. Do you like not, it? I like it, I'm not very really craving. You like it, right? You like it, right? Yeah. Whenever you eat yeah. a lot of bread or yeah. spaghetti, yeah. you will have more pain there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just gonna let that bother me too. Yeah. 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 So yeah. should yeah. should yeah. should reduce the uh, reduce wheat flour product. Can't avoid it. <laughs> you cannot avoid. If you avoid, it, you're gonna have other problem. So you need a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay. A little bit. Yeah, that was very interesting. I'm going to put a few needles in. You can assess that by taking your pulse uh -huh. and mm. looking at your tongue, and now he's going to do a specific acupuncture point to open up the energy system. Have you ever had acupuncture? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here in, what sort of position is in, the, in the US, here in, in America. Mm -hmm. For what reason? Uh, for anxiety, 
couple of weeks ago. Huh? For anxiety, a couple of weeks ago. Anxiety. Anxiety. Yeah. yeah. Also, if stress mm -hmm. can cause that pain more mm -hmm. than. Mm -hmm. In a Western term, diagnosis is different, okay? Mm -hmm. Calcium and things like that. Mm -hmm. In Chinese medicine, we see look at differently. Mm -hmm. Either you eat too much wheat flour product or stress, mm -hmm. that night you're going to have more pain mm -hmm. next day. Can you get up, stand up? Mm -hmm. See if there's any ch changes in your hip joint. Do you still feel anything? I think it's less. It's do you still feel? Yeah, I still feel very slightly, yeah. Do, do you, you still feel? Yeah. Do you feel the needles? <laughs> yeah, I feel the needles. Yeah. <laughs> Are you afraid of needles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put the needle. Huh? I put the needle. If you have a pain, and you tell me I give you ten dollars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have pain, you don't have to pay me, and you decide. This one, to get rid of the hip joint pain, we have to completely change your stomach system. Okay, mm -hmm. internal mm -hmm. organ GI system. Mm -hmm. When we change the GI system. Mm -hmm we can get rid of this pain completely. Mm -hmm. Or Western term, you look at this way. GI system may not absorb mm -hmm. nutrition, whatever needed mm -hmm. to repair, mm -hmm. to maintain normal function of the hip mm -hmm. joint. Mm -hmm. okay. So in this case, uh, with the, uh, some herbs and a treatment anywhere, photo 10 treatment, mm -hmm. be completely free. I want to stand up, see if there's any pain. Any differences? Any differences? You cannot, huh? Okay, that's fine. Anybody has a headache? No headache? Anybody has a, um, has a uh, shoulder pain? Shoulder pain? Where? You can come here. I can come here. Here, here, here. Chair. Thank you. All right. So he, he has says that he needs to really watch his digestive system. So <laughs> where, where is your low back pain? Where is it? Oh, it's, it's here. Do you feel right now? Um, it's subtle, but it's there. It's there. Yeah. Turn around. See where where is it? Mm -hmm. All right, this area. Yeah. Okay, turn around. Okay. So again, he's doing the pulse assessment. On the right side, you can assess different organ systems, such as the digestion, respiration, circulation, and liver, gallbladder, small intestine, large intestine, stomach, spleen. So you get an assessment, and then you determine the weakness in the body, and go ahead and proceed with that. So that's, that's what, what he determines. And Dr. Kim has probably put over 5 million of these needles over 40 years. About at least 150,000 a year. Do you feel any sensation on your low back right now? Yeah, I think so. You can feel? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just relax. Just relax. Pain? Pain? Is that painful? No. So I don't wow. have $10. <laughs> 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 you lost $10. You had the chance to get pain, but <laughs> it's not a setup. It's not a plan. <laughs> you do work here, right? Okay, now, is it pain? Did it give oh, you pain? Back. Yeah. Oh. Move your back a little bit. It actually feels better. Should it be better? Huh? Should it be better? Yeah, it feels like a. The feel way it. you, the way I see is, is it's your intestine and your female organ is not, can be healthier. Okay. Because of that, you have that pain there. Female organ and large mm -hmm. intestine. Okay. Those, those two areas give you back pain there. When the female organ energy is not flow freely, you have more pain. Or when the large intestine is not f 
freely flow, then you have more pain. And then if they are works better, you have less pain. And that's affect also small intestine too. That's what it is. See if you feel better, you're back now. Okay. What was your pain? Right. Where? There. Okay, that's fine, okay. How long you have that pain? Uh, five years. Five years? Mm -hmm. Like neck pain. Neck pain, five years? Off and on. Off and on, okay. And you're welcome to ask questions. We can have Q&A right now while he's treating. He can go ahead and treat and, and speak at the same time. And I can try to answer. Relax, relax. Anybody have any questions about what he's doing, what, what type of assessments or treatment he's doing? So he's using different points, obviously. It's the art is finding which are the points individually the person or the patient needs. So there's a whole combination of points you can use. You can select the points, any of the 12 principal acupuncture meridians. See if there's system. pain on your back. A little on the right. Still there is pain? Yeah. It's loosened up? 50% loosened up? A little tight just on the so upper back. On no, the right. how many percent is loosened up? Um, 10%, 50%? Maybe 20, 30. Percent? Yeah. It's better. Better. That's that whole idea of relaxation response, and that's how acupuncture also can work on stress. This right now is working on the pain, but we can use Okay, anybody has any questions about acupuncture? Or oriental medicine, we have uh, one of our master herbalists here, Dr. Kim is working This, this you need, the, you need the, uh, a few, anywhere four to 10 treatment mm -hmm. to get rid of that completely, to get rid of the pain, we have to walk on your stomach, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay? That's it, you can get up. This one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I put a little deep, yeah. On this and one, too, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, deep, okay. That's okay, then. Yeah, that's that. Dr. Kim, the right picture is like this. Uh, Dr. Could yeah. you maybe talk a little bit about the clinic in case there's somebody else in this room that would like a treatment, how would they go about um, the clinic, next slide. Yeah. This is the Empress Clinic. So um, at Empress Clinic, we usually have our interns working under the direct supervision of uh, doctors okay? like Dr. Kim yeah. or Dr. Gu, Dr. Chow. We have many different supervisors. So the intern okay. will do the treatment okay. and, and yeah. will be under the guidance and advice of the supervisor. Supervisor cannot have anywhere between mm -hmm. 20 and 50 years uh, of experience in the field of okay. oriental medicine. So the patient comes and gets an assessment. Of course, the intern is not gonna take 30 seconds to assess you. That takes only after 40 years of practice you can do that. He's gonna spend probably about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, make the determination what the weakness is in the individual's body configuration, the oriental medical assessments with the pulse, the tongue, questioning. And at that point, he will determine which is the best type of treatment he can give you and also prescribe individualized herbal compound that will work on the innate weaknesses that you might have. So uh, I see here that uh, you have a special offer for Googler, $20 for the treatment, which is, uh, I think, a very good offer here. When do you have the coupon? You can get up, stand up, okay. stay around. Turn around, walk around a few blocks. No, walk a few, no, walk a few blocks. And then come back. 
Any pain? Yeah. It's completely free. Completely free. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was subtle before, but I don't feel anything now. Okay. Okay. Sit down. Okay. Okay. So, she, these two needles taking care of her low back. <coughs> this is temporarily to get rid of the pain. To get rid of this pain permanently, you need some more treatment to make your female organ and large intestine healthier. Then you, you can permanently get rid of this pain. This treatment will last for a while and uh, depends on how the energy goes in your female organ and uh, large intestine. We call it lower jaw. Uh, pain may come back. If it's come back, it should be less than it used to be. But then down the road, many months later, it may come back again. Okay? okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Okay. okay. You were brilliant. Right. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions that you might have? How long is the, is the typical course of treatment? How many visits? Uh, the course of treatment, I think it varies Thanks depending on the condition of the patient. Second. They might require three visits, five visits, or, or longer. If it's a very acute condition, in this case, one treatment, you, she would feel a change. But you would, might have to have some herbs if it is more like a chronic okay. condition that is facilitating whatever symptoms are occurring. Then you know that might, you might need to take a couple of weeks worth of herb or thirty yeah. days worth of yeah. herbs. Very good. So it varies from individual and conditions. If it's a pain condition. Somebody slept the wrong way and has a torticose. You can do the treatment, that's it, you're done. But if you have a chronic condition, uh, digestive problem or irregular menses, then that might take you know, a few, few visits. Is yes. Oh, how, how long are the needles are in place? That, that varies to the condition, but it can work be in the average of 20 minutes, like when Dr. Kim started the treatment, was about 20 minutes the needles were retained uh, in the 20 minute range. They might have to be repositioned and that might take a little bit longer. I think Dr. Kim wanted to uh, share some, uh, Dr. Kim wanted to share some meditation techniques and uh, this is something, again, that you can take home with you. It will guide you through a meditation. Okay. And, so uh, meditation can help you um, a lot. With Dr. Okay. Kim, maybe they can see you. To relax your uh, tension every day. All right. So uh, Dr. Kim? This works. Oh, OK. Works. Really, yeah. Meditation can reduce your stress a lot. So every night, if you can do it, Every day you re we get the some some sort of re attention or stress. So if you can get rid of this every day, that would be great. So a few minutes, let's do meditation, okay? Make yourself comfortable. Close your eyes. Relax, relax your shoulders. Relax your elbows. Relax your wrist. Relax your fingers. Relax your chest. your stomach. Relax your back, including your spine. Relax your thighs, knees, ankles, toes, 
Completely relax. Relax your neck. Back over your neck. Side over your neck. Front neck. Relax your head. Back over your head. Top of your head. Side of your head. Forehead. Relax your face. Your eyes. Nose. Finally, your heart. Completely relaxed. You are completely relaxed. Be aware of your breathing. your breathing. With the eyes closed, wash your hands, wash your face, take a deep breath, and you open your eyes. Well done. Thank you very much.